Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Pi-hole on a Raspberry Pi 0W and how to set it up to uh, block all ads across your network without the need for an ad blocker on every single device. Here's the gear you're going to need uh, to get this set up. So first of course we need the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this has to be a Raspberry Pi 0W um, as this is the most seamless way to do it. And we'll show you how to set up the Wi-Fi network without having to plug it into a monitor um, during the SD card uh, setup. We're going to need a 16 gigabyte SD card to install the Raspbian software and Pi Hole on it. Uh, we're going to need an SD card reader if your computer doesn't have one. And then also a case uh, is optional, but it helps protect the Pi uh, once it's installed. And finally, a power connector. Um, so this is a micro USB cable. Um, and we've got it connected to a power adapter on the other end. So uh, we'll move to the, the, my computer now and we'll get this SD card um, installed and set up. So the software we're going to be using today to install uh, Raspbian, which is the Raspberry Pi operating system on our Raspberry Pi 0W, is, is the Raspberry Pi imager software. This is a relatively new release from the um, Raspberry Pi uh, company. Uh, previously you would use a software like Etcher um, but this has been released to um, help streamline things a bit and um, make it a one-step process. So basically what you have to do is download this uh, software from raspberrypi.org. Uh, I'll have a link in the description. Um, you have to First step is choose your operating system. Today we're going to be choosing uh, Raspbian Lite. So the ma main difference between this and the Raspbian Full Edition is that uh, Raspbian Lite doesn't have any uh, uh, graphical interface. It's purely a command line, but we'll be able to access it through SSHing, so remote access into the Pi, which means we don't have to hook it up to a monitor at all. So we're going to choose Raspbian Lite today and then choose our SD card. So I've just got the 16, SD, 16 gigabyte SD card that I showed you before. I'm going to click that and then we're going to write that Raspbian image to the SD card. So this will take a while and we'll just leave it uh, while this installs and I'll come back to you once it's done. So now that we have the Raspbian Lite operating system installed, we have to set up the Raspberry Pi to be able to access our Wi-Fi network without having to use a screen. The first step of this process is we need to create a blank, completely blank file with no extension uh, called SSH. So to do this, just click uh, create a text document and make sure you delete the dot text and all the rest of the text and just type SSH. And it will come up with this prompt and we want to click yes. If you don't have those file extensions visible, you'll need to go into view and tick, make sure this box is ticked. The next step is to create another text document. This time we're going to delete everything again and call it WPA underscore supplicant dot comp. And same as the last time, we're going to be click yes on this. We're going to use Notepad plus plus to edit this file just to make it easier. And this is going to contain all our Wi-Fi configuration information. So I'll add this, the text you'll need in the description down below, um, which you can copy paste into your file when you create it. So here we have the text and there's a few different things contained in here. First is your country code. So for me, it's Australia, so AU, uh, but yours will probably be different. Uh, and I'll add a link to where you can find out what your country code is if you can't work it out. Um, and we have some other text that's needed and then finally our network information. This is the most important part um, of the process. Uh, so we're going to need to change these to match our Wi-Fi network. Now I'm going to do this off camera but basically you want to change this text to whatever the name of your Wi-Fi network is and this text to whatever the password of your Wi-Fi network is. So I'm going to do this real quick. So now that we've completed adding your Wi-Fi network and password to this file, we want to add both of these files to the boot 
partition or our SD card and that will allow us to connect straight to our Wi-Fi network on boot. So now I'm going to change over to the um, camera and we'll show you how uh, installing the SD card back into the Raspberry Pi and booting it back up. So here we have the SD card that we just installed onto the Raspberry the operating system onto. We're going to put that into the Raspberry Pi. Right, so now that's installed, we can turn on the power and boot it up. And you should see that green light start flashing. And that's how we know things are working. Um, and so we'll wait a bit for that to get going and for it to boot up. And then the next step of the process is to connect to it over our network. So the next step we're going to need to be able to access our Raspberry Pi over the network is to use a software called PuTTY. Now this is a software that allows us to SSH over the network and access the terminal of the Pi. Uh, on Mac you can use the terminal but in this case because we're on Windows we're going to have to use uh, this software. So it's pretty simple to access the Raspberry Pi. All you have to do is type in for this host name Raspberry Pi. And there we go. For this you want to click yes and here we're now SSHing into the Raspberry Pi. So now that we're connected to the Pi, you're going to have to log in using the default login details. So for all instances, it's going to be Pi, P-I for the username, and then for the password, we're going to do Raspberry, just how it's spelled there. And so that, just like that, we're logged into the Raspberry Pi over the network. So this is your terminal. This is how you're going to access all the uh, the Raspberry Pi and make any changes that we're going to need. So the first step we're going to want to do is type in sudo raspi-config. This is going to take us to a more familiar looking screen and this is where we're going to be able to change uh, a few of the um, details of um, the Pi. So this first step, this is where you can change uh, the new um, password for your Raspberry Pi. Here, I'm just going to keep it as Raspberry for now uh, to keep it simple, but you'll want to change it to something a bit more secure. And then a few other network settings that we can uh, go through. So these are all okay. We can keep these the same. And we want to make sure our localization options are set correctly. So if we scroll down to whatever your country is, so in my case it's going to be Australia. So I want to go down to where it says AU. So English, see how here it's selected as Great Britain. I want to change this to AU. So now that that localization steps are completed, we're going to want to update the Raspberry Pi so that all the software is at its latest version. So the, to do this, you're going to do type sudo apt update. So that's going to run through a bunch of steps. And we'll just wait until that completes. And now that that's all done, we're going to run a similar command called sudo apt upgrade. And I'll be including all these commands in the description down below so you can easily copy and paste them. And then just click Y to continue and let it do its thing. Okay, now that that's done, we're ready to install Pi or on the Raspberry Pi. Before we do though, I'm just going to type in a simple command to find out what the actual IP address of our Raspberry Pi is because this will help us when we're setting up our router to be able to run through Pi Hole uh, as a DNS. So to do this, we'll just have to type IP ADDR. So as you can see, as we look through here, we want to go to this part. So the IP address of our Pi is 192.168.200. So this will be useful for later when we go to set up, set it up in our router. So now that that's done, it's time to install Pi-hole. Now installing Pi-hole is quite simple, and as, 
as basic as uh, following the guide on their website um, and also just running a simple command. So as you can see, uh, I'll add this uh, command down in the description, but all you need to do is copy and paste this command, curl SSL and the PyHole website uh, bash and run that and that will install PyHole for us onto the Raspberry Pi. So now we just have to wait for the Raspberry Pi to install. And as you can see, there's an interface that's popped up that will allow us to, that will show the install of PyHole. So if we just wait for this, and then once it's done, we'll get to the next step. And then we just click enter on this next step. While, while we have our terminal selected. Keep clicking enter. So here we go. In this setting, we're just going to use Cloudflare as our DNS provider. And we're going to keep all these selected as they all uh, are fine for our usage. And we're going to select both of these to block ads over both protocols. And we're just going to set the current IP address, so the one we looked at before, which is 192.168.1.200, as a static IP address for this Pi so it doesn't change. And then we want to install the web interface and as well as the web server. Uh, we're sure we want to log and we want to keep everything. So this will just finish up installing and we just need to let it run. So now that the Pi Hole install has completed, it will pop up this window. So we can just click OK and we can access the Pi Hole web interface uh, through this address. Uh, so if we use our IP address and then slash admin. I'm just going to copy that and I'll click enter there and we can just leave this for now. And then we can open up a web browser and just go to that address. And as you can see, the PyHole admin uh, console is going to pop up. So this is where you can access, uh, you can see which clients are active, um, how many uh, ads have been blocked, and the domains that are on your block list. And you can change this over time. Um, so here, we just want to put in our uh, Pi password. So here, you'll need to put in your Pi password. Pi password. Um, this is shown on a terminal window, and this will be different for each user. For us, it's right here. So we're just going to copy and paste it there. Um, and then that should let us log in. And there we go. Now we see a lot more details about our uh, Pi hole. So before we can get this properly set up, we need to make sure it's working on the network. And to do this, we have to go into our router and make sure it's all properly set up. So in order to, con to configure your router to work with PyHole, you're going to have to open up your router's web interface and change some settings. To get here, you're going to have to go to the address 192.168.1.1 on your local network. This should be the same for most routers and your login details will be on your router. Uh, in my case, I'm using the Asus RT AC68U router. Um, and so the first step we're going to have to go to, let's go into the WAN tab on the side and change a few settings. The first one is we're going to want to go to where it says WAN DNS setting, change it from, change the connect to DNS server automatically setting. We're going to change this to no. And then in this case, we want to use the Cloudflare server details is 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. Now this fixes a lot of issue with the uh, Pi um, trying to connect to your router. Uh, so this should solve some of those problems for us. Uh, and that's all you need to change here. Uh, we can leave that for now. We want to click apply. And then we wait for that to process and then we can go on to the next step. Okay, so now that's done, we're going to want to go over to the LAN tab and change a few settings under the DHCP server tab. The settings we need to change are 
changing this domain name here to an easy name that you'll remember. So this is what the pie will show up on the pie hole interface. Then we want to change this DNS server one to 192.168.1.200. Now this is the local IP address of our Raspberry Pi. And so that's how the router knows to look to the Raspberry Pi for all its internet connection. And so all the traffic can be tunneled through that Raspberry Pi. And we want to make sure both these settings are set to no. And finally, you want to set the IP address of your Raspberry Pi as a manually assigned IP address. So this means your router won't try and assign another device to that same IP address and it will always be exactly where it's supposed to be on your network. And that's all we have to do on the router side of things. Um, now we'll switch over to our Pi-hole web interface and make sure all the settings are um, up to date on there. So here we are on our Pi-hole interface. I've already logged back in. Uh, there's a few settings we're going to need to change to make sure everything's working properly. So first we go into the settings tab, then we're going to go into the DNS tab up here and make sure we've select ticked both the first two boxes for Cloudflare. Uh, this is the uh, DNS server I've chosen to use and it's from what I've heard seems to work the best. Uh, and then the only box we want to have ticked down here is the use conditional forwarding box. We want to make sure we've got the IP address of our router and that name we chose before in the router settings. And that's all we have to do. Uh, so we first want to just save and then you want to reboot your Pi uh, to make sure everything's working properly again. So as we can see, now everything is up and running with our Pi hole on our Raspberry Pi Zero W. This has been running for a few days now and we've got 15 clients, so all the devices on my network running through it with a whole lot of queries, uh, 3,000 bl blocked ads with 25% of the traffic through our network being blocked. And here you can see the amount of number of domains that are being blocked uh, from coming through. So thanks for following along with this tutorial. I hope it helped you installing uh, Pi-hole on your Raspberry Pi Zero W. It will be a useful tool in uh, preventing ads across your network and is another project you can do on your Raspberry Pi to help make your life a little bit better. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be making some more videos on other tech topics soon, so stay tuned. See ya.